Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. We're so excited for our third session of the Spark Experience Accelerator. Um, so I'm going to share my screen to start off um, today's session. All right. So uh, to start today's session, I thought it would be really fun to start with this quote from uh, a very famous futurist, uh, Jim Dater. And he says, any useful statement about the future should at first seem ridiculous. So I love this because today's session is really all about, you know, getting ridiculous, sharing our ideas from our worksheets. And again, right, like, we want to go ahead and make these super fun, which means really, I think kind of a lot of times um, exposing your creativity, which I think sometimes can be very uh, scary, right? And so I have this fun chart here. And so to combat the fear, I like to think about how we transform it into the other F word, fun. So we're going to be transforming our fear into fun, and we're going to get out of our comfort zone and into our growth zone. And so if it's not scary, we're not doing it right, because in order to get into our growth zone, we have to go through the terrifying territory of the fear zone. So we're going to start there today and we're all going to be fearful, but we're all going to turn our fear into fun and move into our growth zone. So it's going to be a great day. Um, I also just want to uh, kind of go over the rest of our schedule just so we have um, this in mind. So next session, we're going to be doing um, really kind of a more formal like presentation um, on the experiences that we're developing. So today is a little bit of a, a test run, right? And next week we have, all right, next week, next month, we have some very special guests um, with us. We have Lonnie Hansen and also Colin Wren. So Lonnie is um, a legend in Colorado and has really been working in the immersive space for a very long time. And Lonnie has worked with um, huge clients like Neiman Marcus. And also he uh, did a really fun immersive experience um, at the Stanley Marketplace called Camp Christmas. Um, and that started in 1999 and then Lonnie um, pivoted as we all did in 2020 and put the Camp Christmas online. So Lonnie has some really fun experience just kind of thinking about really digital and physical and then also um, great insights on pricing strategies. And so he'll be great to have with us. And then also Colin Wren. Colin is I would say Colin has his finger on the pulse of Denver. He is a writer for 303 Magazine. Um, he covers culture and food and all of the fun things. And so Colin will be with us just to kind of give his perspective from what he currently sees in the Denver market and really kind of um, uh, will be a great uh, resource for giving feedback on the experiences that we're all creating here. So that's cool. And then in July, um, we're going to have Olivia Omega, which um, she's a branding expert. Uh, Olivia, her claim to fame, she um, some of her products have, were on the Ellen DeGeneres show. And uh, she kind of launched this huge company from that. And she has a great story around that. So Olivia will be with us. And then also Colin is going to come back because he's so excited about this program and he wants to be involved. So we're going to have Colin um, back just to kind of talk about how do you tell the story of the experiences that you're creating? And then, you know, what are some of the best ways to kind of reach out to media and influencers and gatekeepers to really kind of like help promote um, your offerings. Um, within this kind of time period of June and July, also we need to get into the nitty gritty around um, really kind of thinking about our artist pairings of, uh, do you have someone in mind or do you want to do it yourself? Or would you like us to help pair you with, um, talent. And so 
Uh, I'll talk about that at the end of today's session, but uh, I just want to keep that keep that in mind that really June and July, like we're going to really get into kind of starting to make these things happen. And then also, which that means pairing artists or figuring out that particular piece. And then that also gets into the budget piece. And so we'll talk about that at the end of today's session which then rolls into our final experience reports, which you'll see kind of the format at the end of today's session. And then our last um, kind of formal session together is that we'll be talking about um, the, the role of design in packaging your experiences and really kind of thinking about that as a tool for, again, just uh, capturing customers and then really kind of getting into like more of the PR uh, type of stuff. And then really as a collaborative here and as a cohort, how can we all help each other and really kind of promoting each other's offerings. And so our guest speaker for that is coming soon. I got to keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> and then uh, the last piece is um, really we'll start launching these in September. So we got that. Um, and then I just want to, again, uh, remind everyone that we want to be ridiculous today. <laughs> and that's really good. And so now I am going to hand it over to um, Dawn, who works with the uh, city of Centennial and does uh, marketing and communications. And she's going to talk about some opportunities that are uh, on our horizon. So take it away, Don. Thanks, Brian. Hi, everyone. It's so great to meet you. Um, I just wanted to share a opportunity with you all um, and kind of gauge your interest. So the city is ramping up to host um, some community events this summer. Um, and we're really excited about it. And um, some of the events that we're going to be having for the first time this year are neighborhood events. Um, and they're going to be held on a Tuesday or Thursday evening um, throughout the um, throughout June and July. And there'll be there, there's going to be one event in each of the four districts across Centennial. Um, and so the neighborhood events just kind of think, in terms of um, a local park, a couple of food trucks, some live music. Um, they would be from 6 to 8 p.m. and just the surrounding communities would be encouraged to swing by. Um, we're anticipating having some booths and some tables that just to provide information about initiatives that the city is working on, possibly a couple of vendors. And along those lines, um, we were thinking that maybe these would be a great opportunity to have some sort of a presence for the Spark Centennial program and then also for you all um, an opportunity to you know, promote your businesses and then also promote or kind of gauge some feedback on the ideas that you're thinking about for this accelerator pro program. Um, so the thinking was that maybe for each event, um, we would have pair up maybe like two businesses um, to be present um, at each of those events. And the idea is if you feel like you're far enough along with your concepts, um, then maybe this is an opportunity to um, get some feedback from the community on, on your ideas and um, kind of demo lab um, the ideas and you know however that looks if you're far enough along where you've actually got something to show um, that's great or maybe just talk it through um, so just wanted to gauge your um, interest in in participating in that way that's awesome I'm excited yeah yep awesome definitely this is Laura and um, we uh, the boutiques here at South Glen are, I think, already doing something. It's not really to participate in any of those, but we're planning a, a VIP event this summer. And so we're trying to get some communication that will be at each of the, we're working with, uh, with Kathy Turley to try to get um, information on that VIP event out to 
these ward. Um, so that's um, how we're trying to participate in something that an event we have coming up. I'm not sure how I would translate into what I do into that environment, but at least it's getting somebody to know we've got something going on that we're, and it's going to be a, a nonprofit um, fund, well, not fundraiser, but kind of fundraiser. So um, that's what we're currently trying to do. Neat. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and then uh, the other thing is um, just in addition to the neighborhood events, just wanted to share with you also that we are thinking about um, possibly some sort of um, way to promote your um, your accelerator concepts for our September event, which is we're hoping to be kind of a really big day. Um, this is our 20th anniversary for the city. And so the September event is our big 20th anniversary celebration. We're going to have like chalk cart and car show and all of these fun things. And um, we're not quite sure what it looks like for um, the, you know, experience accelerator um, program, but definitely, especially since that's so close to when you guys are ideally going to be launching your, um, your concepts, just wanted to um, just mention that we are definitely thinking about that as an opportunity to, to promote those and, and draw some um, customers to those experiences. That's it. Over to you, Brian. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Don, and thank you for the opportunity. And um, I think it's like super fun, right? That we have these like little kind of laboratories where we can kind of test our ideas. So um, we'll put all that information in the Slack. Um, so, and, and Don, you're in the Slack too, right? So people can message you if they have any questions. I am, yeah. I haven't spent a whole lot of time there, so I might need to set up my profile or whatever, but yeah. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, everyone message Dawn and welcome her to the Slack <laughs> channel. <laughs> Lure her in. <laughs> cool. Well, that's great. Um, and then I would also like to introduce our very special guest speaker for today. And we'll be hearing from her in a little bit, but I just wanna um, you know, welcome Vanessa Barkas to our awesome Spark Experience Accelerator. Thank you, Vanessa, for joining us. And um, we're very excited to hear what you have to say uh, and your presentation. So we're very much looking forward to it. So thank you for coming. <laughs> awesome. All right. So um, let's go ahead and start diving into our worksheets and really kind of maybe just giving a, a couple minute presentation on what you're coming up with, what you're thinking about. Um, so uh, how about we just go organically and whoever wants to go first, why don't you unmute yourself and go? Or I can call on people. <laughs> All right, I, I'll call on people. All right. Oh, Gina, I see you are, you're at a meeting. All I, right. I can go. Okay, I mean, yay. <laughs> eventually we have to share, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I uploaded mine. Do you want me to share? I uploaded it in the Slack channel. Okay, I would say, yeah, if you can, um, let's see here. If you want to share your screen, if you want to okay. do that, or you can just talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I can. Okay, let's see. Share my screen. And there it is. Okay, so I'm even hoping I'm on the right track of what you're talking about. <laughs> because I'm trying to, we kind of started this whole concept of experiential, kind of the whole taking it to a different level in a workspace. And so um, for those of you who don't know, we have a, a co-working space and we were like, how do you make it more than just offices? How do you make it an experience? So we start at the site area. We have little signs that say rock stars needed. Uh, we have some that say unicorn parking, spy parking only, you know, all throughout the parking lots. So when I think of site, I think of from the time they pull in the parking lot to the offices that have little pergolas over them and they look like houses on the outside. 
Uh, we have a pergola patio. Um, so those are my site things. But even when you said, when Don said chalk drawings, I was like, ah, we need to do chalk drawings in the parking lot. Um, so we have that as far as sight. Hearing, there's definitely, and we did this as a, as a team, we stood in there, we were just closed our eyes to listen. There's always laughter in the cafe area. You always hear people talking, laughing. There's always a happy hour in the evening, in the afternoons. So you hear people kind of, you know, cheers or this week it was somebody crying over something bad that happened in their work. And so then you're hearing people kind of talking. Then there's music throughout and we have bird sounds in this garden area we have. So different sounds. Um, and then the touch, this was my biggest challenge. I was like, we need to up our game in the touch area because we have lots of plants. So when I think of texture, we have plants and fuzzy pillows on the couch. Um, we have an old fashioned phone in one of our phone booths that I thought that's kind of a touch because everybody always wants to pick it up and play with it. But I thought of in the middle, I want to create something like a made of stones that people would touch and, and have that. Um, and then smells, we have a specific scent throughout our whole space and it's a tobacco vanilla that we found long ago and everybody knows that's like when you walk in you smell it very faintly but you smell it and then there's fresh flowers obviously i have a blank here so i need to work on other scents in there um although maybe it's coffee because taste we definitely always have you know awesome coffee and tea and things and then we put little in our mailbox area we put little prizes in people's mailboxes. Like sometimes they're just love notes and sometimes they're um, pieces of candy. Um, and that was because some people don't get a lot of mail for their business and some people do. So we thought, oh, we'll make it a fun thing for people to have little things, little candies or something in there. But this was another one. I was like, oh, taste. We need to, I'm picturing like they pick something off and chew on it. I, I have to work on that, but um and then combo thing, this was super fun, but again, kind of challenging because I thought when I combine A, D, and G, it's our welcome area. Maybe we need more of a bigger entrance of something, flowers. So right now it's like the signs and the flowers combining G, J, and M. We have a little, a couple nooks that have, um, there's music and there's a, a oil, essential oil thing. And then there's plants and it's a reading nook. So I, I kind of took these, but I'm, I'm going, I think now that I'm thinking of it, I need to go even bigger. We, we do something when I think of ridiculous. Um, we, we did this in the past um, during COVID, there were fewer people in our open area. So every day at four o'clock, we called it four on the floor and we would turn on a fun dance song and people would come out of their offices into the cafe. We would just have a big dance party. And I'm thinking, I think we need to reinstall that because people love that. But then we got busy again and back to business. So, um, and then I'd love to put little flower boxes outside of people's offices to make it look more like a home. Um, so again, I'm hoping I'm on track with what our intent was, but that's what I did. That, that's awesome. Well, I, I love all of this. Uh, so, you know- Gina, thank you for your courageousness too. Yeah, yeah, being you're first. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is so fun. Well, so I guess my question is, is, you know, doing this exercise, like um, how has it either opened your mind or closed your mind <laughs> on really kind of thinking about um, like the customer experience and really maybe where you want to go next with really kind of your offering? And it's interesting because it definitely has got our whole team really thinking of the experience. Like we keep talking about Instagrammable moments. Like when people come in, there's Instagrammable spots within our space that everybody that comes in wants to be on the old fashioned phone and there's a top hat that hangs down and it's a light. So everyone wants to take a picture in there. Then we have another area. So we keep looking at what can we do to kind of up that where people love sitting in these little nooks and taking pictures and working in those corners. We're creating an office that's going to be all 2D. It's going to look like a 2D room, but it's a, an office. And we rent those out as daily offices. So we thought, what if we created each of the four daily offices to be really different, almost like the selfie museum, um, where you have these really cool work areas without making it too crazy that they can't work in there. But 
something that's fun to make that a work um, space for the day. So I think it's it's definitely challenged us to go, how do we go even bigger and more, more when people leave, they go, this isn't just a, a co-working space. That's just an office. Cool. I, I um, well, and I, I don't want to be the one that like is this like dominating here. So if anyone has any like feedback, please uh, zip me up. But I, I will say just kind of two really kind of quick things is I think um, one thing that jumped out at me when you were talking is the entrance piece too, right? And so I think, um, and I might have said this before, but like when you ask people to remember uh, something, like they remember the last thing first and the first thing last, which like a lot of times is the entrance and the exit, right? And so I think that's like, again, like a kind of strategic kind of, uh, you know, uh, point, right? To kind of like think about within like the customer journey. Um, right. And our bathrooms. It's funny that the weird things that people always remember and they tell other people, people come in going, oh my gosh, I've heard that you guys have amazing bathrooms. And I'm like, that's so funny. But in our bathrooms, there's music really loud. And then there's um, that vanilla tobacco scent in the, in the bathrooms. And we have funny magnets all over the bathroom stalls. And we have, um, it looks like an airplane window in the stalls. So when you sit down, it looks like you're in an airplane. And then there's really cool wallpaper with these beautiful pictures of women. So people that go in the women's restroom and the men's, we have a really cool cityscape wall. So people talk about the bathrooms, which I thought was funny. And then they do love the parking lot signs, which is the first thing they see when they park. Cool. Well, and then I'll just say one more thing here too is, um, so this week has all been about play for me. And so of course, playfulness is at the forefront of my brain always, but uh, especially this week. But I think the one thing is, especially in co-working spaces is like thinking of the role. And obviously you already have a very playful environment from all the things that you've shown us. But I think even kind of like thinking about the playfulness between different companies, right? And the idea that playfulness actually is the precondition to creativity and actually that playfulness builds trust, right? Which is like a very, well, it is the probably most important part of business is that you trust the people. So kind of thinking about how you can foster collaboration among all the other businesses is like, how do you you know, strategically integrate playfulness like into those rooms where like maybe the table has like, is it actually a spinner? And so when you sit down, you can spin the spinner and like that starts conversation and thinking about how, again, those playful interactions, right? Start to really help facilitate um, the connections between the work that's happening inside those spaces. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I'm making a spinner for our coffee. <laughs> love, love it. Cool, anyone else want to give any feedback or have any ideas? It sounds really, really fun. Yeah. <laughs> I need to make one of the offices maybe an escape room. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We need to work together on that. We Absolutely. need to work together. We need to do a fun event. I think that yeah. would be fun. Yeah. Well, and I think you're right about like the physical activity, the dance floor, like mm -hmm. especially if you're sitting and working all day, it's yeah, a great it's good to take that kind of a physical break. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. to add really quick, hi, I'm Veronica from, from the Clue Room. Um, <laughs> Gina, when you mentioned the restrooms, I, I, I don't think that's a funny thing at all. People, even just having clean restrooms apparently is just like a huge thing for people yeah. but to have it like as like a nice and intriguing looking restroom is like a whole other thing um it's amazing what a coat of paint will do to change one room completely um we're kind of we're kind of experts when it comes to just having paint i mean all, every room in our facility is a different color which is kind of fun um so I wanted to add to that as well. That yes, the bathrooms are awesome. can be make or break, it seems like. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's an overlooked area. And Definitely. we kept saying during construction, the bathrooms have to be amazing. And our bathrooms are where crew, I take my selfies. So <laughs> <laughs> and the construction crews don't understand that. They're like, what? We're like, no, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
Well, I'll just say just to keep us on track here, who would like to go next? I'll, I, I'll oh, go good. next. Laura, if you want to go, sorry. <laughs> All right. You know, I. Um, oh, and I'll just say one thing really quick too. So, Vanessa's, your talk is around like 15 minutes, right? Yeah, like like 13, 13 Okay. <laughs> I can Sweet. try and talk fast. But. So, no, well, we want to make sure. So uh, let's just kind of uh, be aware of the time. So we'll probably want to wrap this up around like 1045. So. Perfect. All right. I can so. be very brief. So that's good. Sorry. So, um, so Gina, again, thank you for going first. It let me know that I think I'm kind of on the right track, but it, as far as your track, if that's the right track. And, um, and I didn't do as many sketches, but I had a couple of sketches. Um, so this has been really challenging for me. I've always been um, a dreamer and a, and a thinker as far as future, but putting the actions to the dreams is sometimes the challenging part. It, um, when I originally opened the store, my vision was to have another location, like maybe in a warmer area, say Scottsdale, you know, and so um, that was at first what I was thinking, but then this vision helped me to think, well, what if I could take tea is for table, what it is now and make it a whole bigger thing. And um, doing the things that I'm not great at, but I really have interest in. So um, ideally I would love to have not be in a mall and be in a, like um, a, a home, like a little house or something that was charming. And, um, but I feel like I have to have enough people that know who I am so that they will go to the destination and it'd be a destination type. Um, and, you know, whether, whether it is like a downtown Littleton or if it's some, somewhere else, but um, and I have this vision of, um, cause I've done events before, like I've done a charcuterie event with the restaurant next door, but wouldn't it be great to have the type of kitchen that you could do cooking events, you know, I carry a, I carry a line called Bella Cucina, which is a very um, pretty well-known artisan um, gourmet line, but they do virtual cooking classes. And wouldn't it be great to have a cooking class that I could do in there? Wouldn't it be also to have a room where you actually if, um, had etiquette classes or you had another room that had, um, wine tasting events, um, but a, a place that's in the community that you could actually have events and do fun things that are, and then you have everything you need to create that event in the shop Tia's for Table. Um, and so I did one little drawing of a little of a little house with pretty flowers and stuff in it. I didn't upload, you're very good at that, Gina, congratulations. But uh, maybe I'll get it uploaded. But then I was like, well, there's pictures and I could probably have a vision of a picture on a board more so than like, this is what I'd like to do, have this just charming place that people just desire to come. I, um, on some of the other things it was, I, I already play jazz music in the store, light jazz, because I don't want anything with words to distract the conversation in the store. Um, but wouldn't it be great on some of the events when we do our ladies night events or we do anything to have live jazz music? You know, I would love to have that and love to have that experience or you know, be able to have a large enough space that I could have a piano in there for some live music that, and maybe that's part of the vision of this other space that I would have. Um, I, I love the fact when people come in, because it hasn't always been this way, the streets at South Point has this problem with their sewer gas smells, which is just not always really great. And I'm like, so when somebody comes in and they're like, oh, it smells so good in here. I'm always th thinking, thank goodness, because I try really hard to make sure it's smelling good. So it's things from, you know, the, all of the senses that I want it to be like eye candy for somebody to come in and that they're smelling these wonderful smells and they want to take the essence of what the story is and bring it to their own home. So that's kind of what I'm working on is, is that as a concept. 
Cool. Well, I love which that. is way out there, way way out there. <laughs> like I don't even know how I could ever make that happen, but it's a way out there thing. Well, I would say first off, we're in the ridiculous mode, so you're right on track. Um, but also, I think like it might be interesting. Again, like this is, I think the benefit of this program is thinking like how can we prototype just little ideas, right? That then can help you catapult into the like your ultimate vision. So um, we'll we'll do it. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> So I would say uh, from like kind of the same question, like, you know, how, how did this like worksheet, like kind of like, I guess, either open or close your mind to the possibilities? It changed uh, the direction of my thought. My thought was always more locations, not what could I really do with one location? So it kind of changed that. It changed... Um, I guess it changed my thinking in that, you know, why not? Why can't I look at some of these things, even though it's been a really tough year? I'm only, you know, it's only been four years of business and this last year we might as well just have thrown away, you know? So it's like, I'm still really new to this. And, and so why not? Why not look at, you know, um, what are some things like I've done some virtual events right now, but how do those virtual events, because I had to do virtual, how can they now become events? I don't really have the space for it, but what thinking outside the box are, is there something else I can do to make that happen? Not just in another, you know, in a, another restaurant or so uh, it just is making me continue to think what else? What, 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 well, if I want to do this event, where could I have it? What could I do? Yeah. Um, how could I, you know, it's putting the ideas down on paper. That's yeah. always the biggest thing. <laughs> it's like getting it from here to here. Yeah, so where the rubber meets the road is always the hardest part. Yeah. <laughs> so any, any feedback from anyone? Any ideas? And, All right. and I want to make sure, is it a tea room? Is a tea like go to have and buy things? No, it's um T, it's the letter T, like B is in boy. It's T is for table. So I offer um everything for um well for so I offer dinnerware, um, china, linens, glassware, gifts. Um, so at some point in time, when we have time, I'll kind of walk you guys through the store, but I do a lot of florals and um, just a lot of, a lot of gifts and, and things for entertaining. Because I love the idea of the dinners, cooking in there, having tea parties in there, getting people in, in there for the experience of doing something. Mm -hmm. And then they happen to see everything and they want to take it home. I, yeah, I agree with Gina too. That was kind of where I was thinking is that would be so fun. It's like, as people are using different things, it's like, oh, I love how this feels or like, I love the texture of, of whatever they're interacting with. Um, so if they are doing like a wine tasting or a dinner or something, they can, it's like, ooh, maybe book, like you could even think package wise, like if you have an event with us, then you're going to also get like this discount on the products. Like if you're shopping that night also, so it's like a dine and shop or taste and shop. So you know what we've done before, like with, um, and I'm sorry, I have a, a customer that came in, but I, um, I did something next door with Indulged that, um, which is a restaurant and wine bar where we did uh, a charcuterie event where they could pre-buy the board and then the they offered the charcuterie um it's kind of we built a charcuterie board and then we did a wine tasting and so they also bought the wine glass so it was a way for me to say okay we can pre-book this but then you get the experience at the restaurant next door and so I love that we got great feedback from that but how can I do it in-house and not have to rely on somebody else and so that's, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to do all those things where then they buy it and they, and they love it. And then, um, and it's from the experience. 
So that's, that's what I, yes, that's the vision for sure. Laura, if you did, um, what if you still keep that concept of that collaboration, but have like, what if you served their wine in your glasses or something? I don't know. I guess, I don't know if it's their wine or not, but <laughs> it's um, not, but yes, it's seemed, like their food, like, yeah. If they almost like kind of cater it, but you like just go pick it up or something. Um, so it's kind of like a collaboration still. But so I could still have it here, but it's, um, although, you know, but it's figuring out how to make that space for sure. Right. Hey, I'm, I'm going to have to go on mute for a second and take care of this customer, but um, I'll be back in a second. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So um, we have like maybe like seven minutes, right? If I'm doing my math right. So we'll, we'll, we'll hurry up here. Who would like to go next? <laughs> can I jump in? Oh, yep, you can go. And I just want to um, say, everyone say hello to Terry. Terry just joined us. Hi, Terry. <laughs> yeah, uh, so good right, yes. to be here. Sorry, I've, I've missed, I, life is just, you know, back to normal now. So things are a little crazy with kids stuff, but um, I'm so happy to be here and meet you guys at least for a few minutes, but anyway. Awesome. Well, thanks, Terry. All right, Bridget, you're on. Okay. Um, can I share my screen really quick? Yeah, I think um, you should be able to. You have Perfect. the power. Yep. All right. So I chatted with Brian yesterday. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, I made some lovely drawings here. I didn't have a chance to like redraw and put them all together, but I like wrote out the combinations. Um, so again, I do botanical, all sorts of botanical stuff along with education and products. Um, and we were thinking like little pop-up events and or like a pop-up space or cart or something that goes to different companies or maybe a school or to just like a, an event somewhere. But it's actually this like botanical, like you enter it and or you go up to it and it's like this cabinet of curiosities almost but it has like all these plants and you see like crafting and then these little drawers so like over here I was thinking um, people could actually craft their own tea blends um, and or like pick up things or look at specimens like maybe this is um, like a an herbal monograph or like a leaf or something. So it has this educational element. Um, so it's creating that curiosity. And that it also has like crafting supplies. So you can like make a tea or make some kind of a blend or maybe you're gonna make a cocktail um, and like do a, you know, a tasting thing or a, a mocktail or just tea if it's at a school. Uh, <laughs> so depending on the scenario, what the situation is. But um, overall kind of like create, I love water and this like mystical global sounds because I really want to bring together elements of the planet and into like the health scene, but in that fun way. Um, so the interactions and like more sounds might be educational talking, but laughing and like, ooh, this is so cool. And that type of a vibe. I don't know how I'm going to get this fountain to be mobile, but um, that's like my dream of like, I would love to have one of those big, like beautiful Italian fountains. <laughs> so if that can be in a cart, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it could be like one of those giant moving cubes and it's like you enter and that's the centerpiece. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically it's like you step into this other world and really it's this like almost entering into a new ecosystem because of all the plants, but then it's decorated with like these tinctures and health pieces and a health and science story. Um, and you smell like aromatherapy and fresh flowers and maybe like rosemary and peppermint um, and people are making things. And I don't know if I, oh, I had to download the second page didn't come through, sorry. But there's like lemons and being like squeezed and a little cocktail jar and then flowers from around the world. Um, and so it's like tasting, tasting the wild world and experiencing the wild world of plants. And it's like very 
kind of like seductive and rich and like, oh, I want to be a part of this. So that's the kind of, um, that's where I went with this. So, oh, and the box. Sorry, one more thing. This touch, this, if they like come in and they're doing more of like a create, craft your own or shopping style, they might have their own botanical box that they're like filling, but it's closed. So people may not be able to see in it unless they want to leave it open and have it kind of be like this, you know, I'm sharing this, like everyone can see what's in my box, but it can also be a private, like, this is my box. <laughs> like, what I'm choosing to put in here is up to me. So that's all. Awesome. Well, you've I'm trying to be fast because I know with time. <laughs> well, you've already heard my feedback since we talked yesterday, but uh, anyone else want to, any comments? I have one that it sounds very fun um, and I love the direction that you're going. I've been to one apothecary. Um, I think it was apothecary tinctura mm -hmm. where you can make your blends and, they, and they'll help you like make a tea. And that is very fun. And I, my only suggestion would be to have potentially like some prompts or some recipes that people can follow to mm -hmm give them at least some introduction to what they're doing because I have I have made some very terrible tasting teas <laughs> on my own. Well I was thinking too like with these cabinets um, and or like where the where the teas were or the different herbs it also people beforehand might get like a little survey of like what are your flavor interests and like what what areas of your life do you want to support? So it would also be like traveling through not only the ecosystems, but maybe like the body systems. And it's like, ooh, here's teas that support digestion or here's teas that support um, mental health. Here's teas that support sexual wellness um, or fertility or whatever. Um, and then also like, mm, if you like more pepper, like minty stuff, like make sure you put in this mint blend so kind of like a flavor flavor and physiology profile guide so thank you cool all right well um and i just want to say this bridget was a high school science teacher so she has the science the power of science to do all these fun things <laughs> cool all right well um who would like to go next we have Veronica and Frankie and Katie, which one? I can go next. I'll keep it very quick. Um, the sheet was very fun for us. Um, I'm not even gonna show you the drawings because they're so bad and my handwriting looks like a toddler. But uh, the thing that we had to really think about for, especially with like the idea of all these different sites. I mean, it's something we think about all the time for our escape games, especially light and especially hearing and touch is something we've been experimenting with more. Uh, smell is certainly the toughest part. I think people always walk in and they're like, wow, it smells so good in here. So at least there's that, especially nowadays, like we're like extra on the, the sanitizer. So at least it smells like kind of eucalyptus like, so that was kind of the biggest fragrance. Um, I always like to say some of our games each have a different smell to them, like our Nautilus submarine game smells very metallic because it has old like metallic pieces from a Todd, the owner found them. I, I don't know how he's brilliant at that, but it, that's kind of fun. Some of our games do take place more like in more vintage time. So it does smell like that when you walk into an antique store it has that certain smell. Um, so that's what's kind of fun to think about at least in terms of smell is not necessarily part of the puzzle, um, but it is certainly part of the experience. So that was something that was interesting to think about. Taste is definitely the hardest thing <laughs> that was hard for us to think about. I mean, we certainly don't want people feeling like they have to lick things as part of like their <laughs> experience. Although, you know, certainly, I mean, I'm not going to try and stop somebody from maybe like taking in more taste smells through smelling, you know, like where you, you can smell more when you have your mouth, I don't know, your mouth open. I know it sounds weird, but it's a... <laughs> We we were just trying to think of things that like, okay, what would it be that would be anywhere close to taste? Um, I guess kind of like chalkiness, we use chalk for them to keep track of what they're finding. I'm not saying people eat chalk by any means, but you know, chalk dust happens to get in the air, let's say. Um, but we have been trying to think about with taste, 
we've been wanting to do more mobile events. So things on other people's sites, because you know we only have so many rooms in our facility. We're actually at max capacity with the 10 games, um, but we're looking to how we can take our concept and literally throw it anywhere. And we've done it a few times now. We had a mobile game at a brewery. We've done some mobile games for different corporate um, team builders. We did one for uh, FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America. And then um, we did one at a consignment store. So it was kind of fun. We just are trying to see like how we could take our concept and literally throw it in anywhere. So um, that's what we're trying to look into more, especially with COVID. It was like, things are, things are different. Like people are looking to add more experiences to the business they have now as example by the, you know, what we've heard today. Um, so I think that's what is kind of the next step for us is maybe to include more of that taste. We get more wine involved, beer, you know, there's so many wonderful things to experience in our city alone, let alone, you know, the metro area in the state. So, uh, that again, we're kind of slowly starting to work on that is how we could take the clue room anywhere. <laughs> well, we have a customer for you, Gina. <laughs> Gina, right? Yeah, we got Gina. We got a collaboration, I should I say there. Wrote, I just wrote that down. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and, and back, Gina, I, I, I wanted to look up where you guys are at. And we had a location that was just down the street from you. Where that Groovy Tech is, we used to we're, be there. We're next door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, oh. next, we're across from Top Golf. Yes. yes, we used to be over there. So now we're not too far from you, though. So, <laughs> uh, well, and I'm going to have to say this. I think Terry and I must have been uh, sharing the same brainwave, brainwave because I was like, oh my gosh, like as you're talking about the taste, I was like, yeah, you should do like a bubble gum, like escape yeah. room and like call oh, it yeah. like sticky situation, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> That's it. That's the tagline. It's, I know, I know. I, I, yeah, I like king of puns there, but like, anyway. <laughs> cool. Uh, anyone else have any ideas? Cool. All right. Well, we'll hurry. Like, and Terry, I don't know if you um, have any ideas since like you're just joining today. I don't want to like make you participate if you haven't uh you know been with us but then I also don't want to yeah. exclude you <laughs> oh, thank you yeah I think I'm gonna wait till next time okay <laughs> Not quite all right in the right mind yeah cool all right uh so uh Frankie and Katie would you like to go ahead and uh finish us strong <laughs> okay this is gonna be it's all over the place it's a whirlwind <laughs> And it makes sense to us. Yeah. <laughs> and we we just did this all virtually. So we're gonna try, you have to get closer. All right. I'm gonna tour you through Katie's. So no, no. <laughs> <laughs> think, think, think about being in a roller rink and the floor is wild and the walls are wild. Oh, and I'm just drawing more things on this now. Whoops. <laughs> You know, so this is sight. Everything is wild. Every surface is covered with texture and glitter. <laughs> Look at all the glitter and tinsel. Every surface in all these rooms that you can go into. Oh man, I keep drawing on this. Sorry. <laughs> Here's a lounge, very velvet, very uh, cozy things hanging down. Love it. I'm doing this backwards now. Okay. Uh, hearing. The music is making everything vibrate, including your head, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes, not always. I, I like that all the time. <laughs> right? And here's some vibrational roller skate uh, illustrations. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah touch it's mostly like velvet yeah. plastic concrete mm -hmm. soft stuff soft and hard things that you can touch and interact with mm -hmm. smell is, is hard because we yeah. like like fresh botanical smells but that's kind of hard to keep active in a space where people are fitnessing <laughs> So, you know, I think a combination of fresh botanical smells, 
nice cleaning products, but also a little bit of a locker room funk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just a little bit. Yeah. Well, I also have to say this really quick is like you can get like those scent machines and they have like every single kind of scent from like scents you probably don't want to smell. <laughs> yeah, there's so, a like, lot of scents I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it's we want it to be an overload for all your senses mm -hmm. cool. all the time. <laughs> but then also <laughs> some quiet moments. Yes. Sometimes. Yes. Like in the lounge area, which, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it'll be cozy in some spaces for people to escape <laughs> the total immersive, yeah, sensual overload. attack. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the opposites, right? Because I think the extremes and this, like, like I was saying earlier, like going from Phoenix, where it's like 100 to Denver, where it's snowing, like those are extremes, right? And yep. mm -hmm. it really makes you like understand the difference. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was really fun for us yeah, to work we on. We needed this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, any other thoughts? Awesome. Well, cool. Well, I'm okay. Well, first off, thank you, Vanessa. And uh, we'll probably go, well, we will go over a little bit. So uh, anyway, I will say that the chat is going to be totally worth it. So thank you, everyone, for sharing your ideas. Um, we'll turn it over to Vanessa now. And um, then I'll just uh, very briefly go over just kind of next steps after that. So it's all you, Vanessa. <laughs> Just a reminder that we are recording. So if you do have to leave at 11, we'll get you the recording and you can catch up. I'm just gonna Thank you, Mel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apologies, but we are going to go a little over. Okay. We're just having too much fun. <laughs> Amazing hearing everybody's ideas. I love it. All righty. So as Brian said, I'm Vanessa Barkis, and this is curating complimentary offerings and working with artists. So who am I and why the heck am I here talking to you today? Um, I'm a creative consultant and I specialize in the intersectionality of art, commerce, community building, activism, and sustainability. Uh, basically, I help creatives and artists in business and I help curate retail experiences. Um, I also happen to be a jewelry designer. Now, long before I did this, though, I was an entrepreneur a lot like you guys. Um, I owned a boutique in Lohi called Golden, which I started in 2007 as a high-end women's clothing store. But really what gave um, Golden its notoriety wasn't so much what we were selling, although that was admittedly pretty unique in Denver, too. But it was really what we did to transform Golden into far more than just a clothing store that was what created a lot of our buzz. And so that's why I'm here with you sharing my story and giving some insights. So at times, Golden became an art gallery and uh, Katie might recognize one of these from one of our collaborations. Um, at other times, it became a concert venue and even an event space. Other times we let other local retailers, charities pop up in our store and basically it was through curating different immersive experiences that we were able to transform what would have been just a simple store into a whole lot more. And we got a lot of business and a lot of press attention along the way. Now, how did we leverage these immersive experiences um, in, and all of the notori notoriety we gained from them into actual commercial success? By seamlessly integrating things for sale into the experience and creating opportunities for the artists that we worked with to monetize their offerings. This is where art met commerce. So here we have some examples um, of some installations we did that tied back to product or to selling the artist's work. Um, this, for example, was a pop-up we did with another store in town called Ironwood. And everything that you see here was for sale, including all of the plants, all of the decor, obviously the clothing. Uh, we also liked to try and incorporate services as much as possible into our events. Um, so, you know, this is sort of an example of that. This is uh, Dram Apothecary, which you may have heard of. Um, Shay, the owner, was doing little tastings of some of her new product at one of our events. 
Um, this is an example of an art show that we did and we were selling prints and little tin types also um, of the artist's work at the same time. So that's a little recap of what I did. Um, now I'm gonna share with you some of my key takeaways for you guys as you start planning your offering. Now, first, a recap of what some of the things you guys have already covered are, um, because I just think they're super important to keep in the back of your mind as you're thinking about what you wanna do. Um, you know, again, as Brian has said, what emotions do we want to elicit? I would argue things like joy, delight, laughter are things that people want to come back to, but you know, it's up to you. Um, and then how is this going to reinforce your overarching story that you want your business to tell? Always, always keep that in the back of your mind. Um, likewise, you know, here's some more things again, to just keep in mind as you're selecting what you're doing. And some of this is a recap of some of the things you guys have been over, but you know, is it full sensory, multidimensional? Obviously that's what your last worksheet was all about, but you know, are there any gaps like smell? I know smell is challenging for a lot of people, you know, candles, scents, whatever, you know, smell does trigger memory though. But again, you know, where are there opportunities or synergies? Um, can you monetize it? You know, you might be working with artists who don't normally sell, you know, commercial products, but maybe there's a way for them to do prints or, you know, smaller scale objects that they could sell. Again, just like find ways to financially support the artists that you're working with. Um, knowing your customer avatar. Now that is a term that I like to use to describe basically what your key customer demographic is and their kind of personality and lifestyle. Um, so, you know, think about what do those people enjoy doing most. Um, but then also at the same time, um, it's about knowing yourself and really keeping it authentic to you because, you know, you might see something that somebody else is doing and it seems trendy or it seems interesting, but does it really make sense for your concept? Is it a fit for your aesthetic? You know, always keep it authentic. So here's where I also um, think that leveraging partnerships can really come in. And personally, I would argue that almost everything is a co-promotional opportunity. I feel the idea of competition is old school thinking and there's always ways to support your community. And especially, you know, if you understand your own strengths and maybe some areas of business that aren't your strengths or just isn't something that you do that's a great way or an opportunity to bring somebody else in. And this is also, you know, relevant as you guys have already kind of explored in your cohort, you know, some of you don't have physical spaces. So, you know, where are collaborations that make sense? Like the escape room, you know, and the co-working space. I love that. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's really a great opportunity to bring in products or services or experiences that you might not have access to, or maybe you don't, you can't afford. And also conveniently a great way to re reach a wider demographic. So how do you find the good shit? <laughs> um, I get asked this a lot, actually. Uh, I would say get out of town for inspiration on what you want your experience to be. I'm gonna share, I have a pet peeve and that is Denver's copycat syndrome. Um, I find there are a lot of businesses that are trying to do the same concept in town. And I think, you know, people see one business doing something successfully and there's been a lot of people that kind of wanna hop on the bandwagon. So I would encourage you to get out of town. You know, there's so much more out there, especially if you're looking at like cutting edge businesses in places like New York or LA even Europe or Mexico City, you know, go to where the industry thought leaders are to get ideas of, you know, what some out of the box experiences are. Um, but on the other hand, get local when you're looking for artists or makers, because obviously we're here to support our community. So that brings me to some more specific ideas um, on the local level of where you might be able to find people. Um, so obviously we're in the time of COVID, it's kind of a weird time to try to go out and about, but things are opening up more and more. Um, so, you know, studio and gallery openings first Friday, obviously, you know, 
Santa Fe, but there's so many other smaller um, First Fridays around town. And I do see those now starting to happen more and more. Um, galleries, you know, like here's a few examples, but I would say especially studio openings are where you might meet a lot of artists at once. Um, places like Redline, Grace Studios, Indigo Studios are all amazing spaces. Um, granted, you know, this is more in the Denver Metro, you know, rather than Centennial specifically, you guys might know more about Centennial, but um, even places like Art Gym or Art Students League oftentimes do have openings. There's tons of art fairs and craft shows in the Denver area. Um, here's just a few examples, but you know, great way to find local makers. And then, you know, even still, oh, I don't know what that alarm was, sorry. <laughs> no idea, literally. Um, anyway, uh, from the comfort of your own home, you know, hop on social media, you know, here's an example of some hashtags you might try to search to find some local makers that resonate with you. Maybe there's even centennial makers or centennial artists. I'm not sure. I haven't explored that, but you never know. And then, you know, Instagram also offers that lovely suggestions option when you're clicking on somebody's profile, click on that little icon with the down arrow, see some other similar suggestions. Anyway, just a great way to you know, explore and find some more makers to potentially collaborate with either just for a product or whatever it is. Um, one other thing I did want to talk about is pushing boundaries. So I will fully admit that um, one of the reasons why Golden's events and immersive experiences generated so much buzz was because we pushed the envelope. Now, I am not telling you to do anything illegal. Absolutely not. And some of this might not resonate with all of you, and that's totally cool too. Um, but I would, you know, encourage you to ask yourself, what can I get away with? Um, so here's an example. In this photo, we had a tattoo artist come in and do tattoos live at one of our events. This was kind of before anybody, at least in this area, had done this. Um, I will admit, I saw it happening in New York um, with a group I knew, and I kind of imported it here. Um, and it generated a lot of buzz. So anyway, just something to consider. Now I wanna talk um, a little bit more about working with artists and tips on that. And really to me, this is about creating a clear container that allows your artist to blossom. And as Linda put it in one of your past sessions, it's about leaving space to co-create. Um, now I know she was referring to the customer in that situation, but I think this is relevant here too. Um, it's really about communicating clear direction, but not micromanaging because nothing is going to be more of a buzzkill for your artist than micromanaging them and telling them what to do. Um, so here's an example of providing some clear art direction. Um, in this photo here, we did an installation with a local artist named Mario Zutz. And, you know, I knew Mario's work. He does collage work. So I was already familiar with kind of, you know, the scope of what he was probably going to do. But I said to him, hey, we're looking to do an art installation that is kind of an abstract representation of what our designers' spring inspirations were. And I gave him a list of what those inspirations were. And I pretty much let him take it from there. Um, now, that said, timelines and check-ins are so important, you know, just to make sure that everybody is staying on task. You're not running into timeline issues, um, you know, getting everything clear cut and checking in along the way, um, super critical. Check-ins should also always be a way for two-way feedback um, because when people feel heard and they feel included in decision-making, they're gonna feel more invested in the outcome. Likewise, budgets, be super upfront about that right at the beginning. I know some people have a hard time talking about money, it's uncomfortable, but you really need to just be again, super upfront about it so that there's no misunderstandings or hurt feelings or, you know, who knows. And likewise, always, always get it in writing. I have learned this the hard way more than one time. Um, you know, this way you're just uh, making sure there's no room for misunderstandings. Everybody understands what their expectations are. Um, and Along those lines, I also encourage you to make sure that when you're meeting with your artists, that they are taking notes while you guys are talking. Because I have met with many people 
who are like nodding their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like later on, you know, we're on totally separate pages. So make sure everybody's actually taking notes. Um, one last thing I did want to mention, diversity, equity, and inclusion, because this is such an important thing these days and rightfully so. Um, and, you know, really with these immersive experiences that you're creating, it is an amazing opportunity to bring in communities that are outside of your own bubble. So, you know, just as you're thinking through what experiences you want to create and what products you want to include in it, you know, look at it through the lens of, am I being inclusive? Am I supporting maybe some underserved communities that I, I don't otherwise? And again, you know, similar to leveraging partnerships, it's still a win-win situation because you're gonna be expanding your customer reach by including some groups that you maybe wouldn't otherwise. So that is all, thanks for listening. And um, yeah, I don't know if we have time for questions or anything, but I am here to answer. I can stay on longer, so yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we have some time. Does anyone have any? That, well, thank you so much, Vanessa. That was amazing. So let's give Vanessa a big round of applause. Thank you. Uh, yeah, any any questions? And also, uh, we can put like, are you open to us putting your email in your in this? Yeah. Okay. And you're on the Slack too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> We're pulling everyone into Slack. Cool. Any questions? I just want to th say thank you. I wrote down a couple ideas of concerts. Why are we not doing concerts for the summer? We've done an art exhibit and then I, I love and I'm going to look into a tattoo party. I think that would be another <laughs> awesome event. Nice. I love it. That's great. I had a question on working with artists. Um, so Last year, I had someone working on some of our kit guides, and I'm just curious what a good strategy is for um, for those timelines and check-ins, just for, I don't know, my experience, both times I've worked with an artist, it's like, here's the scope of the project, and then here's like an estimate for time-wise, and then both times that I've worked with two different artists, it's like, double the cost and like four times the time. So I don't know if it was like my own communication on like what what is the project and here's the the scope or if it's just like, I'm super picky about like, okay, wait, it has to have like, cause it involved text too. So like with the, with the guides, for example, it's like this really beautiful piece of art but then it also has like how to use like the teas and there's coffee in it. Um, so I was just like, how is it like, what's a better way, I guess, to, to work with artists so that it's like more efficient and maybe more clear with the timeline? Yeah, well, that's interesting too, if you're talking specifically about like a printed material or something. I mean, when I work with my graphic designer, usually, well, first of all, I think getting all of that in writing, your timeline and what your budget is and all of that and having everybody sign it, you know, so that this is a legal document, like, no, you're not going to go, you're not going to go over budget or else, you know, I can't afford to pay that. And that's pretty much just how it is. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you have to be a little stern about that because yeah, you know, people, especially creative types, you know, want to get into the, you know, carried away a little bit and that's great. That's amazing. But you got to make sure it's in your budget. But also um, what I was going to say is, you know, with working with anything where you need to kind of give feedback or modify anything, you know, I would set a certain number of rounds so that you kind of know too, you know, because I've, okay, well, backing up prior to owning my store, I worked at an ad agency. So I was an account manager and this was something I know a lot about because, you know, you'll get a client who's maybe not an artist who has all these different changes they want to make to whatever artwork is being made. And they'll give little bits of feedback here and there and here and there. It's way better to just condense it, you know, like, okay, we're going to have three rounds of revisions and that's it. So, you know, you got to consolidate all of your feedback into this first round 
and then, you know, anything else, second round, hopefully third round, there's not much left, but yeah, I think just, you know, making the whole process pretty organized and setting, setting boundaries. I, I really is what it's about. That's really helpful to hear about the changes. Cause I know that that was probably somewhere where I did not follow through very well is like consolidating. So, okay. Thank you. That was really helpful. Yeah. I, I want to say, I think we both have things yes. to say, <laughs> but um, I do want to say uh, thank you for that insight. I think we're coming at this from the art world and then trying to add in like the customer experience and the retail and the, mm -hmm. that part after. And so um, this was a great way for me to start synthesizing those ideas. So thanks for that. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, if anyone has any questions about approaching artists and how to navigate that, uh, we can talk a little bit about that separately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the Slack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, any, any other questions? Good. All right, well, uh, awesome. So I, I will go ahead and show you our next worksheet here. Let me bring up my screen. Okay, so we're, we're getting a little bit more formal here and, uh, and really this is gonna be an important um, kind of uh, Google Sheet that we're going to start uh, compiling and this is where decisions on budgets and all of that other stuff are gonna start being made. So as you can see, the first little cell here, please put your name and then your business. And um, really through our, from all the other worksheets, we're gonna start actually coming up with like the experiences that we uh, want to implement. So within this particular cell here, we have, well, we have room for two ideas if like you want to go ahead and have maybe two that you're thinking about. Um, and if you want to have three that you're thinking about, go ahead and make another cell. But I just made two here just to start off with. And within this cell, we really just want you to kind of like outline or uh, help us understand what it is that you're, you're making. So really just the who, what, when, where and why. Um, and then in the next cell, we're going to have just like, you know, the ticket price, it could be for, it could be free, right? Um, or it can be for a, a, a paid amount. Um, and the next, but in the next cell here, it's the budget. And so please like, you know, you don't have to put the exact number, but just kind of put it, you can put a range right in there from this amount to this amount, uh, you can go ahead and just kind of, you know, most accurately predict what your budget range is gonna be. And this is gonna be important for us um, because we're going to be then using really all of this information here um, as really kind of part of our decision-making process and deciding how we fund um, your creations. So um, please be very accurate with all of this. And then, um, and so then you can see that we have a, a, a space for the experience number two there. And then we're getting into Vanessa's awesome suggestions here where really kind of listing your complimentary offerings and merging commerce with the experience. And, you know, some of you may already have product that you want to highlight that really uh, you're designing these experiences around, or you may need to be bringing in products. So what is that? Just let us kind of know what you're thinking there. And then of course, um, thank you, Vanessa, again, for bringing up the a very important um, uh, topic of the equity lens. And then also just kind of the, the, the working with artists and making sure that like everyone is benefiting from um, this particular uh, experience that you're creating. So there's a few questions in there to answer. 
Um, and then the next piece is, uh, you know, who are you going to be working with? Um, like, do you need help finding an artist or someone who can help you execute that particular idea? So just put yes or no. And if, um, no, if no is your answer, that's awesome. If you have someone in mind or you're going to do it yourself, uh, just let us know that. And um, we'd love to uh, also see who you're working with. So put uh, your uh, other website there. Um, and then also finally on this uh, sheet is, you know, are you open to collaborations within the cohort um, or are you actively seeking um, a, a partnership? So just put yes or no there. And of course, we're all on Slack. So you can go ahead and you can um, ping people um, and, you know, start that, that collaboration. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen there. Are there any questions? No? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up um, for really this session, but I will want to just uh, reiterate the importance that next session, we will have Lonnie and Colin with us, and we're going to be getting feedback on really kind of the experiences that you're creating. And again, let's get as specific as possible with the pricing, with the budget, because we do have their expertise. So we want to be able to really kind of utilize that. Um, and again, like this is starting to get into where the rubber meets the road and we're going to be executing on these things um, and budgets are starting to come into play here. So uh, it's very exciting. So please do as much of this work as you possibly can. So when we meet um, in June, we have a really solid place uh, to begin to start from. And one other thing with that is there is a possibility. I don't know if, if uh, everyone's, I'm, we're going to do a poll to see if maybe we want to meet in person for this next one, since I feel, you know, when we're actually coming up with concepts and getting that feedback, um, it could be beneficial to meet in person. So I'll send out a poll and we'll just see if people are comfortable doing that or not. And we'll just kind of go from there on whether it's in person or virtual. And um, I think that's it. How, Mel, am I forgetting anything? No? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. good to me. This was a great session. I really loved hearing everybody's ideas. Sweet. Yes. Well, and I'm just going to have to say, I always leave these meetings so energized and so charged. And um, thank you for making the beginning of my Friday super fun and very playful, my favorite. So I cannot wait to see what everyone comes up with. And I also just want to extend the offer of office hours. So if you do want to meet, please just um, email me and we'll figure out a time. So awesome. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.